Welcome to another edition to Motivational Sundays with Kevin and Friends. This show was originally created from one of the more than 300 quotes I had created for the contents of my book. After studying human behavior for over 40 years, I was always curious about these quotes. Were they words that just landed on a page or were there conversations that needed to be had? So I gathered a couple of my good friends and some of my best friends. Francine Tesler, she's one of my co-hosts, Christopher and Gilda James, the voice of the show, Mr. Otis Spencer, and our uh, Desbian here, Naheem Garcia, Denise uh, Lopes, and we have many more people on here, and uh, my conscience, Lanez Kinsey. Hi, my name is Kevin McLemore. I am the host of Motivational Sundays. We meet every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and based on our interpretation or perspective on a quote, we talk about it. So today, we bring you another quote, and today happens to be Mother's Day. So for all of you mothers that are listening, and for the mothers that are on our show, we wish you a very happy Mother's Day. Give someone a hug. Let your mother know how much she appreciates you appreciated her. Thank her for her gift of giving you life, and spoil her rotten today. Spoil her rotten. Okay, wait on her hand and foot, and don't leave uh, because your social media is calling you. Spend the day with your mom. All right, because um, this life is not forever. All right. So, Otis, if you don't mind, Francine Tesla brought us a quote today, but go ahead and share it with our, our listeners. The quote for the day. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. Hearts will never be practical until they may until they are made unbreakable by the wizard in the Wizard of Oz. All right, all right. I I you know, I think someone was talking to a tin man when they came up with this quote. They goes Oz, and um, you know, believe it or not, Otis Spencer, our voice of our show, has actually played both the Tin Man and the Wizard. And we'll we'll talk about that when we get around to him doing his thing today. Um, Francine, how does this quote land on you? So because I'm a psychic medium, when I do my readings or when I when I speak to different people. I get a lot of cartoon images and things like that. And The Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite uh, shows, you know, favorite movies. And the quote kind of hit me in a way where, you know, everyone loves their mom and everything like that. But those who have lost their mothers, losing a mom is probably one of the biggest heartbreaks anyone could ever, you know, have in their life. And it, will, and it generally would leave a permanent scar on us. However, the quote serves as a reminder that <clears throat> although an unbreakable heart may cause less pain, it would also prevent us from truly living our lives and, <clears throat> and prevent us from living. So it's crucial to cherish the memories of our moms and our loved ones, even though it may be difficult at times because they are the ones that make our hearts beat and keep us moving forward. You know, my mom used to always tell me to, you know, keep dreaming and keep pushing. And if I didn't have a dream, I couldn't make it happen. And she was a big motivation because she was also very psychic, even though I believe everyone is. And she always told me to keep pushing, no matter whether it made sense to people or not. Um, and I really, I, I really hold that close to me because my mom is in spirit you know, and she was always telling me to, you know, strive and, and keep our hearts strong enough so that we can bear the pain of the loss while being practical enough to appreciate the love and the joy that our mothers and our loved ones bring to our lives. Um, you know, think of it as the other quote that they said that there's no place like home. We're always looking for some sort of great purpose or great wonderful thing. And we're looking so many other places if we can't find it in our own, you know, our own self, and we can't love ourselves, how are we going to love other people and appreciate life as it is? Um, also, keep in mind that when we do go to spirit, we're not leaving. We're, we're very much like when water boils and it evaporates, their spirit energies are always going to be around us because all we do is change form. And I loved all the references of The Wizard of Oz you know, about having a heart, you know, you know, we always are looking in for things that we don't have, but most of the time we have it in ourselves. And basically, if you have the faith in yourself, 
and you love yourself, you can love others. And if you take your heart and you put it in a box, you know, you can function, but you're not going to live. And it's, you know, it's very easy to push people away. You know, um, I'm a runner, you know, if I feel connected to a lot of situations, my first reaction has always been to run. And my mom would try to tell me to rein it back and make yourself more vulnerable. And that's part of what this is, you know, opening yourself up to be more vulnerable. So the Wizard of Oz is one of my favorite. Um, also, Never Ending Story, which I was talking to with Lanez. And Willy Wonka is another one. And my other one is obviously Flash Gordon, which you guys already know. But, you know, this is something that I could watch over and over again, you know, and my dad loved this and my mom loved The Wizard of Oz. So, um, so that's how it lands on me as I go on and on. And, you know, I'm a little emotional today because I do miss my mom. So thank you, everyone. I'm sure that um, today you are not standing in space uh, uh, alone. Um, we will all get to that point, um, hopefully not anytime soon. And uh and I and I know your mother's still connected um, with you, and uh, and the fact that the conversation you're having today, I've always said, the only time you ever really do pass on is when no one is passing on anything that you've left behind. So the fact that she, she is still part of your conversation, she is still with us. So um, I I thank you for bringing um, that quote. Our, our hearts will never be practical until it's made unbreakable um, from the Wizard of Oz. Um, I'm going to turn it over and uh, to Christopher uh, James and um, you know while they're in the same space and he's got his arms around his lovely wife uh, I'm going to let them pair up this conversation but we're going to start with Christopher and again Gilda happy Mother's Day and uh, Chris how does this quote land on you well first off I uh, uh, hello everybody I, I love the Wizard of Oz um there was there are certain parts that just stay with me forever, and uh, I guess it's probably the scene of the Wicked Witch on the she starts off on the uh, bicycle and transforms to the broom. That's that's that sticks with me forever. I can't watch a bicycle without thinking of a witch on a broom. <laughs> but um, the actual quote, um, I recall the the scene, and I understood I understood uh, the meaning behind that particular quote. Uh, the Tin Man wanting a heart so bad, uh, the wizard did caution him that they will never be practical until they're unbreakable. Uh, so it's a it's a very meaningful quote. Um, however, my thoughts now are more directed towards Mother's Day and what Francine said um, about having your mother um, always with you. Um, I entered the Navy back in 72, and um, I left, uh, my dad was in his uh, the final um, screening for his retirement. And I get word, I guess the day I left or shortly thereafter, that uh, he'd been diagnosed with leukemia. And of course, went into the hospital immediately after that. Um, I received letters from him in boot camp, uh, but halfway through, he passed away. And uh, I remember talking to my mom about that. She said, his death simply marks a end of one era and the start of another. And I did not understand it. I, I nodded, yeah, okay, I, I get it, I get it. I had no idea what she meant. Um, but I did my career. And then after leaving the Navy, I uh, went back to school and got my master's in social work. Uh, got a job uh, at the VA here in Boston. And within two weeks, my mom died. Um, I was talking with the administration, say, hey, look, I'm gonna run home real quick and visit my mom and I'll do the um, indoctrination courses and all that stuff they had. They said, well, we've got you, you know, scheduled for this week for your in-doc. Uh, we can move it to next week, but it'd be a lot easier if you could do your in-doc this week. I said, okay, fine, I'll do it this week. And that was the week my mom died. Um, so 
uh, besides myself feeling like I had my last chance to visit my mom, but I didn't take it. The, the uh, administration felt the same way. And they, that was a, a dark cloud on their head. But then I remembered something my mom said, and it finally made sense. The passing away of someone very dear to you will end one particular part of your life, but it always opens up a brand new portion of your life or part of your life. And for me, it was my involvement in the VA and working as a social worker. Um, I didn't understand that because at, 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 at the time of her passing, all I could think about was the loss or the, the, the breaking part of the heart. The unbreakable portion was what she gave me um, in understanding and in knowledge of what was truly happening in my life. One portion of my life was ending, but a brand new and more important, more touching portion of my life was just starting. And I, I, so, I can sort of see the unbreakable portion of that quote coming to life or actually having meaning now. Uh, and, and in my case, it was simply understanding that this isn't the end. It, it, it doesn't stop here. Uh, one portion did come to, to come to a close. But now we're all positioned for a brand new part of, of my life. And in that, you know, it will go on to the next chapter. But that's the it, 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 It's amazing how words that lay there on the page and how they come to, to life when you position the words in your heart. And uh, that that was well, well said, uh, well put together. Um, Larnez, I can't wait to hear how um, this lands on you. And I want to personally thank you. I was in a room full of mothers at the Strength of a Woman's um, Summit yesterday with Lar Larnez. Um, it was an amazing talk. Um, it was featured and brought together by um, the entertainer, uh, Oscar nominee, um, Mary J. Blige, singer, actress and so forth. She was joined on the stage by her personal friends, Angie Martinez, which is a radio icon, her best friend, um, Tasha Smith, which stole my heart yesterday. I'll, I'll put it out there, ask her husband to forgive me, but she was, <laughs> she was hilarious. Um, um, she touched uh, upon the whole, whole, whole life experience in relationship to your faith. So for those of you that believe, get connected. For those of you that don't believe, sooner or later you will be connected, uh, either by choice or by situation. I don't have to explain more. And she was also joined, that was dressed all in white, Miss Taraji P. Henson. Mm -hmm. It was a hell of an event. And to all those people that attended the summit, happy Mother's Day to you. And thank you, Lones, for allowing me to um, be your co-pilot that day. So um, let's segue back to the show. Your hearts will never be practical. Wait a minute. Let me stop. Say way back to my voice. Hey, Otis, I'm sorry. Hey. <laughs> I, I stepped out of line. Please correct me. <laughs> hearts will never be practical until they are made unbreakable. Larnez, how does this quote land on you? Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Grand Rising. Um, these words speak directly to our souls. The heart, the very center of our being is not a machine, not a tool of practicality. It is a seat of our deepest desires, our love, our pain, and our joy. Now the wizard said, hearts will never be practical until they are made unbreakable. And no, that is true. But in the language of the spirit, our hearts will never be, were never designed to be unbreakable. They were designed to feel, to experience the fullness of life, to learn from every joy and every sorrow. In this journey of life, your heart will face challenges. It will break. It will heal. That's where the practicality comes in. It's not about making your heart unbreakable, but about understanding that each break, each mend is a part of your growth, 
a part of your spiritual journey and you're, you're not supposed to seek an unbreakable heart, seek a resilient heart, seek a heart that learns, a heart that grows, a heart that loves more deeply in every experience. That is the true wisdom of heart, right? And in this wisdom, you will not only find practicality, but the very essence of living a full and blessed life. That's how this hit me. You know, it's hard to follow that. I just thank God I'm not Naheem. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> so um, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, um, all of our listeners or someone just tuned in. Um, this happens to be May 12th, uh, 2024. Um, we all have a mother because if not, if we didn't, none of us would be here. So our hats goes off to um, all the mothers that are out there. If you're not connected with your mom, it's time to get connected, it's time to find grace and forgiveness um, because life is short. And um, and mom, you know, I'm wearing a tie because of you. I hate wearing <laughs> it, but I'm wearing it. I'll explain. Maybe, maybe not. But Naheem, how does this quote land on you, my brother from another mother? Well, uh, happy Mother's Day to everybody, uh, to all the mothers. Um, I always say the shorter the quote, the harder it is. Good job, Francine. Um, well, let's just start with this. The tin man was looking for a heart because he didn't have a mother. And your mother's your heart. Your mother's your everything. I couldn't even, my heart goes out to you, Francine. And to those who don't have their mother, I'm still blessed enough to have mine. And um, and uh, I call her two or three times a day uh, because I don't want my heart broken. I know one day it will come. I know one day it will happen. Um, and, and I don't look forward to that day. But I think about this quote, the hearts will never be practical until they are made unbreakable. But heartbreak is real. Uh, I mean, I can't, I can't follow what Lauren said because she was right. Your heart is supposed to be everything. You're supposed to be able to experience everything. The day you have a heart that's unbreakable is the day that you're dead. So the tin man in search of his mother, because that's what he was looking for. He didn't have a mother. He's a tin man. He made up. He didn't have the the ability to be born into life and be catered to in love. So he was constantly looking for a heart. Something that he could hold on, something that he could feel, because he couldn't feel, he couldn't say, he couldn't feel, he couldn't think like the rest of us do. All he could do was just march on and be as strong as he could. This recently, and I and I think about my my niece who just had her two babies shot up in the house three days ago. Three days ago. And this is what she's looking at at Mother's Day. Thank God her babies are here, but they're traumatized. Why? Because they have a heart and they're going to experience trauma. They're going to experience heartbreak. But that's the beauty of life. If you can't experience everything that life brings you, you're dead. And the tin man didn't want to be dead. And neither do any of us. So our love and our life lives through our heart. You know, my mama, the apostle Dr. Damis Garcia, one of the greatest women I ever met in my life. And not because she's my mother, because I remember I know her story. She came here as a young woman, very young woman, and came here with her mother, her baby sister, and her one-year-old child from Cuba. And she was 16, and she was always a pillar and strong and one of the most elegant, classiest women I ever known in my life. Does she have downfalls? Of course she does. She got a heart. <laughs> she got a heart. So I don't know if I even hit it with this quote or, or, or if I was able to articulate with this, how this quote fell on me. The only thing that keeps coming to mind is that the tin man was looking for a heart because he didn't have a mama. So yeah. call your mama. Call your mama all the time. You only got one. Because your mama's the one that's going to show up at that hospital when you hurt. Your mama's going to be the one that's going to be there kicking you in the butt when you're feeling down. He's also going to be the first one to lift you up. So we can never have an unbreakable heart because the heart feels. And as long as you feel, you alive. When you don't feel, you dead. And the tin man didn't want to be dead no more. Yeah, thank, thank you for that. Um, 
Yeah. Otis, one more time for the quote. Why well, gather my um my my thoughts after listening to everyone share and again, mothers um all over the world, because we do reach a global platform. Happy Mother's Day to you. And like um Naheem says, have a heart, connect, hug your mother. Otis. Hearts will never be practical until they are made unbreakable. Well, for this week, um, there's been a lot of things on my heart, a lot of things that uh, have been on my mind. And when I got this quote, Francine, I have to tell you, I looked at it a couple of times and I shared this conversation with um, uh, Larnez yesterday as we were uh, leaving New York. And I said, uh, this quote made me go, hmm, made me think. Um, and I and I didn't have an answer. And that's um, that's hard to do coming from Kevin McLemore. That's hard to do. But then I, I, I thought about it and I started to write things down. And um, and I said, you know, this quote made me think of um, beyond the word practical relating to what is equal, what I would say to pain in someone's heart. I think when a post person goes through um, pain and suffering, they get to a place where they become named numb and the pain goes away or they just surrender to it yesterday and i mentioned this earlier um i sat in a room full of women at the strength of a woman's um, summit and i listened to superstar mary J. j blige as she um opened up both her heart and mind about her many missteps and successes and how they were posted and how she was criticized and condemned in the public. All I can see amongst her with her friends, her four friends, is a human being. And how we are openly, and I know that some of us on this show, and I'm very protective of my people on the show, Naheem knows it, Lanes knows it, Otis, Christopher, and Francine knows it, is that one day we will reach a point that we will be sitting in the same seat as Mary J. Blige, Angie, uh, Tasha, Tajay, and we will be um, criticized for the things that we've said, we've done, or we didn't say. People are going to try to counsel us because that's their position in life and that's all they have. That value is to take something away from someone else. And um, it, 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 made, it made my heart heavy. So when I looked at the practical part and I looked at the unbreakable part, it says, you know, when you come to the matters of the heart and you come to the truth of the pain, you the pain allows you to transcend and it allows you to grow. What once crippled you now will make you resilient and unbreakable. Life is all about choice and chance. We all choose whether to carry something with us as heavy on our heart or to say to yourself, allow yourself free, freedom to break away from the weight of that pain. When it comes to choice to be unbreakable or a choice of freedom to be free to make and to be free makes you unstoppable. When I watched the four friends that stood on that stage uh, together, and as hilarious as Taja Smith was, I can see the pain of Mary J. Blige wanting to be um, just acceptable for who, accepted for just who she is, a human being, not for the star. And as I see my brother Naheem Garcia receive all the accolades from his talent, I know what's coming for him. And I will tell the world firsthand, you got to come through me first. All right. And you're talking about something unbreakable and unstoppable. You ain't getting past me. You won't get past me when it comes to Larnes. You won't get past me when it comes to Christopher, Gilda, Francine, and Otis and I. All right. We're not disciples of this conversation. We're warriors of the message that has to be had. And Gilda, I didn't forget you. I'm going to let you go last today <laughs> on this quote. But I do have to say this, is that for all the mothers, and, I, and I'm, I'm taking this from Tasha Smith, stop all the back talk when you're talking about other women. 
because all of these women and many of them are raising young men by themselves. We don't need you scratching the back of our head and kicking us in the butt at the same time and thinking that, you know, the world is beautiful. We need you to stand with us so we can hear your voice. And for the men that's out there, your woman is not, not there to be positioned behind you or to be underfoot. She's she's there for you to be prop for you to prop her up and take a back seat and it goes, that is my girl, till death do us part. Ride and die, as Tasha said. When you're when your wife is receiving an award someplace, you're supposed to take the front row seat. When someone is throwing stones, grab your catcher mitts. Don't let her endure endure that pain. So when I look at this quote and it says, the heart will never be practical until it becomes unbreakable. We all know our level of pain. And once you know your level of pain and your heart can't be broken, you will know freedom. And that's how that quote landed on me. So ladies and gentlemen, my mom is still with me. The reason why I have a tie on, I told my friends uh, earlier, because my if I had shown up with my brand new shirt on without a tie, my mom would have said, baby, where's your tie? And I said, mom, I don't like wearing a tie. She goes, baby, where's your tie? I said, mom, she goes, baby, where's your tie? And I go put on my tie. So mom, you don't have to tell me three times like I didn't hear it, hear it the first time. Naheem said it, for those of us that still have moms, embrace your mom. My mom is living with something that's going to take her away from me sooner. Mm. So I'm going to say happy for Mother's Day to my mom. And so with that said, we meet every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Naheem, go ahead. I forgot Gildo, I know. And Otis. Oh, I forgot Otis. I'm sorry. Oh, Gilda, go ahead. You you in deep thought today, brother. Today's month is deep. Yep. The well, you, all, listen, all I, I, right. I got to be honest with I have to be honest with you. You know, um, and now this is part of the show that you guys normally don't get to see. Um, what went on with, with um, Naheem's fa family? Um, we have to stop doing this crazy stuff as people, as people of color, as people uh, as human beings, we have to stop taking lives for materialistic things or because we're holding grudges or, or we can't articulate conversations or resolve issues. We got to stop. There are too many mothers out here without children because someone has taken the life of their children. And it pisses me off. You know, I, I asked Naheem last night, what can I do to help? And I think the biggest way that, that to help is it for people to face the truth? If you got nothing to lose in life, stay away from people that are living life. Go off to a space of your own until you find purpose within your life. But having your finger on the trigger, a knife, or the throat of someone else, your character is in question. Your heart is in question. You are broken. I'm just thankful that my niece gets to hug her babies on Mother's Day. Because mm -hmm. we've so, been going to a funeral. Yeah, so based on interpretation and perspective on, on these quotes, these words are no longer landing on a page. They come to life. So, Gilda, I'm going to go ahead, and I know your, your, your quote is going to be shared. And for those listeners that if I laid something heavy on your heart, life is about two things, chance and choice. You can choose not to listen to this. You can choose not to share it. And you can take the chance to think about what I said and, and sit down and talk to your knucklehead child, be it male or female. All right. Be honest. Tell them the truth. Go out there and make a life. There's 107 historically black colleges that are waiting for an opportunity to educate your son or daughter, to show them a different life. And you say college is not is too expensive. Losing a life cost us more. So, Gilda. Yes, Jim. 
Happy Mother's Day. I'm a mother, a grandmother, and a great grandmother. You know, and um, with all that, I have to say, I mean, it was just, it's just, everyone said such a powerful thing. You know, I've been on his face of this earth for a long time, and I'm mostly a listener to see what everyone's, what your story is. But um, just to get back to um, Naheem's story, uh, a couple of days ago, <clears throat> Chris um, and I received a text from his um, cousin in Mississippi. And um, his wife passed away. We don't know how or whatever, because Chris is not close to his cousin in Mississippi. But then I found out also, <clears throat> his cousin wrote back also, to tell us that um, he had just previously had three boys died during that time. And so his wife didn't quite make Mother's Day, but uh, he's he's he right now he needs a lot of love. And since it is Mother's Day, um, the other part of that story was that. Um, Colleen was dealing with the loss of her three sons. Mm -hmm. And um, it just sort of kind of came into my head, that quote. Uh, I think the loss of her three sons broke her heart. Yeah. 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 So, and yeah. The unbreakability sort of um, proved to be not the case and, and it, it just it just pulled at my heart that much harder uh that she when mm -hmm. she she went through that and uh the strain of that uh you know, I'm, I'm not i'm not i'm not a doctor i'm not even a, a close social worker but I, i'm gonna say as a as a bystander it was a loss of her three sons that broke her heart yes. and that's why she yeah. no i mean in the spirit of that the person I'm, I'm glad that my niece is gets to hug her baby, but the kicker for me, all of it, is my older brother. So two days before his grandkids get shot up, his oldest brother dropped dead of a heart attack. The second of his oldest brothers to die within the year. He's still mourning his oldest son who died of pancreatic cancer. We all still mourning him. And I asked my niece, what do you need? How can we help you, honey? And she said, just hold Fah up. We call him Fah because that's short for the father, but we call him Fah. She said, just hold Fah up. He can't catch a break. She's sitting there with two babies in the hospital getting surgery. And all she could do is think about her father. And this is her stepfather who raised her since she was little. All she could do is think about him. She said, he can't catch a break. This is one of the greatest men I ever met in my life. Solid, good man, good man. And, but the good always has to endure more than the rest of us because they're good. <laughs> I mean, how much, how much crap do we take on? And we good people. So think about it. Good people are supposed to endure. That's why our hearts are breakable. <laughs> so, so Otis, how does this call land on you? After you know, matter of fact, we we've gone so so far from the Wizard of Oz, we we we've gone. No, we are in Oz. <laughs> we are. <laughs> How's this quote land on you? Uh you know, everyone said a little bit of everything, even within my mind, especially Francine, uh, to open up your heart to be vulnerable. Uh, we have good times, we have bad times. There's good, there's evil, there's happiness, there's sadness. You know, even I put up a picture in remembrance of my mom. Uh, even as actors, we have to be able to be vulnerable. You're learning a character. There's a vulnerability in that character. We have to be able to show that. To love someone, as Francine said, you have to love yourself before you can love someone else. To make it short and sweet, that's how it lands on me.
And to our listeners, I want to thank you for staying with us. Um, we ran a little bit longer than uh, we normally set up to do. Um, we kept the train on on the track, and that's what life is. It takes us to um, different destinations. Sometimes they're wonderful places, and sometimes they're places that need to be repeated in, in our travels. So sometimes we have a short commute during our life. I want to thank all of our listeners um, for coming in and sharing this space with us. We meet every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you like what you've heard, go to our uh, YouTube page, RMK Productions and Network, and you can follow if you like, you can subscribe if you like, and you can share if you like, or you can join our group and uh, come in here and give us, based on your interpretation perspectives, um, and uh, be part of this conversation. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope that even though we took the train off the track for a bit, for those of you that are in doubt as to where your purpose is, you listen and share. And like myself, I have a mother by birth. I have two stepmothers by choice. And to love each one is a decision in which I love each and every last one of them because each one of them had added life to me. And we all have mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles that have came into our life that have fulfilled that space. And some of us have neglected that space and need to have, have grace. So if that you have someone today, no matter who they are or how they identify, hug them and let them know you love them. And with that said, my grandfather always said, when you get to a point in life, that you can help someone else out. He says your duty to do so, reach one, teach one. And when we get to that point, we do what? Fade to black. And we're out, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.